oh, it's about to go down. So if y'all see my hand go up top a little bit, it's because I'm on Instagram too, baby. We doing it with my brother, hip hop legend, DJ Kenny Parker. Check it out. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding. And tonight, we have a very special guest. This basketball head is an Abraham Lincoln High School great. And the guy who mentored me as a high school baller. Without his tutelage, I would have been lost on the basketball scene. Man, listen. He taught me about basketball etiquette. He broke down who were the top ballers in the city. He told me about the history of Lincoln basketball for such grace as Eric and Don Marbury to his high school hero, Henry Hamilton. He was the first person to tell me about Street and Smith magazine. All right. For those of you who don't know, this is Street and Smith right here. Mine's is beat up it's from 1986. But this was the Bible for basketball in the 80s, similar to what the Source magazine was for hip hop. He told me what it meant to be all city and the difference between all city and all American. He pointed out the late great Tom Kinchowski and said, if that man knows your name, you, has a, you have a shot at a basketball scholarship. All of these things were new to me, being a freshman and coming from the football world. Not only he was my mentor and teammate, but he was my friend. I've watched him dominate opponents, being a skilled big man with an array of moves, finishing strong down low. Listen, life wasn't always good during them days for this basketball head who had to deal with some difficult times, but he survived. He would go on to receive a Division I scholarship at St. Peter's University and become a hip-hop legend. So, without further ado, help me welcome to the show, Abraham Lincoln, great, St. Peter's University standout, hip-hop legend, and my friend, DJ Kenny Parker. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are you are the world. Hey, hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. We're everybody, everybody goes. goes. Ha, ha. What's happening, man? <laughs> What's going on, man? Definitely, definitely. Listen, first of all, I want to say thank you again because I don't know if you knew how important you being there in my life at that time, right? Because it was a confusing time for me. I made the team as a freshman, didn't know what the hell was going on. I was like, what the hell I get myself into? And then I get to ride the train with you every day. You telling me these great stories about high school basketball 
and how like this can be a dream come true for me if I take it serious. And, and we're here today, man. So salute to you, brother. Yep. But you know, that whole class, y'all were good kids, man. You, Dave, Latifat, Joe, Josie, y'all were good kids. So it was easy, you know, it was easy to get along. Yo, I remember seeing you with the Abraham Lincoln windbreaker, and that was everything. It was just like, like I felt like I was in the TV show Cooley High. Right? Not only that I was in Cooley High, I was on a TV show, The White Shadow. The White Shadow. Yes, you guys, you guys, your teammates. That, that was my teammate. So I'm, as I'm watching this on television, I'm saying to myself, I'm actually living this. Because you, you was the cool, you wasn't as wild as the dude on the white shadow, but you were the big man. You were the cool big man that got along with everyone. And not just the basketball team, Kenny. You was popular with the cheerleaders. You was popular with the football team, with the white kids, everyone. It was just, you know, you had to be that way to be a ball player in Lincoln. Yep, yep. And I had to come, I had to come knock on the window. Yep. I'm outside. And coach, I don't know if you knew this. Coach told me if you missed your first period class. That I would have to run. It was like, make sure you get there to get Kenny to his first period class. That was my that was my job as a freshman. So, yes, yes, and and I think that helped me become a leader early on and throughout my basketball career. Cause I just took initiative, and he told me to do it. So I was like, fine. Yes, that was my assignment as a freshman and to be on the team. So, enough about me. Who introduced you to the game, brother? Well, I did you grow up in? Too, but he, you know, 
he found his way and grew up in the Bronx. So it's the Michael Jordan thing. Born in Brooklyn, but rep somewhere else. Right. Facts, facts, facts. So when you was coming up, who was the best player in the neighborhood once you started to get, you know, make your rounds to the basketball courts? Well, that's a funny story because we got time. We got a lot of time, brother. I got all night. Yo, for you, brother, we going to make this special. And let me say this. I'm going to say this out now. I have Bernard Mitchell, Tiny Morton, John Askew. Silk and Spice. Damari should be on the check-in because I spoke to Damari already today. Right? But this is special to me, Kay, because you were the first, you were my first conduit to basketball, like on the high school level. Even though a lot of these dudes, you know, they was, you know, a little bit more big time, more well-known. You were the guy that was schooling the young dudes, like myself. So, no, 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 that's that's real, man. So, how how did it all start when you found out who was the best player in the neighborhood? Well, my first three years, okay, 10 years old, 11, 12, 13. Basketball was my thing. I was the only kid that was really good at basketball. So, I had to learn how to shoot the ball. Like, it was a collective comic books. I played Skelly. Actually, Skelly was my number one bet. Skelly. Yes. <laughs> you you could have went pro. You could have went pro. I could Right, 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 right. Yeah. James just checked in too, yeah.
against him. So two of us against him, one. Two against one. We used to go to Wingate Park and play two against one. So it would be me and my brother against Ernesto. The game would be 21. He would give us 19. <laughs> Chris play? Yeah, he played. Actually, he went to um, Leopards Junior High School. He was on the team for a hot second. Wow. I'm going to get to the hot second. Yes, 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 yes. He played, but that wasn't really his thing. But right. You know, we, we're really, really tall. So, you know, you're tall, you're going to play. That's right. Right. So I think first day of practice and walk John. This dude had all kind of citywide shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Right, 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 right. Those is everything. They're like collectibles. Facts, facts. John had ridiculous shirts. But I remember the citywide shirt had stars on it. Yep. I was like, shirt is so incredible. This dude, yo, he was the best. He was so far ahead of everybody else. He was like a child prodigy. We played the teachers. Grown men, right? Right. Both of them had played college ball. John had 31. <laughs> Wow. So he was the best dude in our area, and he happened to be on my team. Right, right. So you got him at our team. I made the team. I was averaging like four. There's probably another kid averaging like six. You know, we, we 13 years old. John was averaging 35. I saw John score 44 points. Now like, keep in mind, I had never played organized basketball. Right. Before I made the team, I, had, I only played half court with my friends. I didn't know the rules. I didn't know the three seconds. I never remember the ref. I didn't know nothing about nothing. I didn't know what a center was. I didn't want to play. I didn't know nothing. I was just a tall project. And this guy, John Johnson, scored 44 points. I saw it in my own two eyes. So he was the best. The John, you had John on you. Yes, yes. He talked about y'all. He talked about the junior high school years. Yeah, I hope John watches it. I, 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 I'm, I'm trying. He's going to watch it. I'm trying to call him right now. I'm trying to tell him right now to, to come on. Because this is awesome. This is. I remember, first of all, before I even met John Johnson, you was telling me about John Johnson. Right. John would go up, do some blocking, he'd bring it down and bring it back up and lay it in. I could barely make a layup. <laughs> like, he was so far ahead. Right. Everybody ever, like, like, that I had seen and that he was playing against. He was the, to answer your question, long story short, he was the best player in our area. And we, and that league we played in was, was tough. Devil Dog. Devil Dog will be on here soon. My guy Greg Jones. We're going to get him on soon. Yep. My guy, future All American, rest in peace. And Devil Dog, they was in our league too. Matter of fact, they eliminated us my June, my eighth grade. We lost to their, their they call it intermediate school back then. IS, I don't know, IS 271 or something. It was IS 246. We lost to their junior high school team 
we lost to Ed Davin then now. Oh, God. My, my eighth grade. But John was beyond, like, John was way beyond all, all of us. Like, Ed Davin was a good player. He was a good player. That was all. He was a dope. I was averaging four. But John was, I'm telling you, he was something else to me. He, he inspired me to say, you got to get better. Like, Okay, this is where you are, and this is where the best is. So, Gerald Green on the check in. Gerald Green. Yo, Ben Stein, that's my dude. Gerald Green, what's <laughs> That's my dude, Gerald Green, what's up? Yeah, you got, you got a few people on the check in, man. This is crazy. This is crazy. Yeah, and I think he was the best on this side as well because uh, when I talked to guys in my neighborhood and I found out that John was from the neighborhood, they were saying he was the best uh, at player as a kid, like a child prodigy early on. Yeah. And his hands is huge, right? Huge. Huge. And his arms are long. Yes, similar to Ivor. Iverson. I, I'm going to send you a picture. I have a picture of him when he was at five star. And I think he made the all star team when he was like in 10th grade at five star. Either either it was his 10th grade year or eighth grade year. I'm not sure. One of the two. I'm sure. That's what I'm saying. When I saw John on here, he was just like, yeah, you know, I was cool. You know, I played ball. I was good. I'm like, no. Wait till I get on here. I'm going to tell him what. I'm going to tell him about John. John, you know what, John? You was modest and you was cool. So I'm. Yo, you know what's so crazy? Everyone who saw the John Johnson interview say, yo, even as a grown man, he's still modest. Yo, man. He wasn't modest when I met him in seventh grade. <laughs> to take the game serious. that I watched was the 1980 championship when Magic Johnson played against the 76ers. Yes, yes. And I didn't know anything about college basketball, but somehow this commercial was on, and they're like, back the Duncan style. I was like, oh, that's, you know, the old bus is coming to me brand new. Right. Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. There's a guy named Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He has a style. I'm like, what is a style? What is, what is this? 
you know, I'm getting all of this at the same time, like a sponge. Right, so, right. Nah, nah, this is real. I can I can agree, yeah. That's crazy. Nah, I need this. Don't worry about it, fam. We I, keep keep talking. We got Abdul Fox in the building. What up, Abdul? Rhode Island, great. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here on the check in. Yo, yeah. So, I guess John was the guy who you played against that let you know you had to get better. With him, yes, yes. But he was like the gold standard. So, you know, he averages 35 and I average four. So that was the gap that I felt I had to be That's the gap where I felt I needed to go. Right, right. Every single day to try to get better. John said, What up? Somebody just said, John said, What up? We're talking about you, double. <laughs> <laughs> and it's crazy because. That's his Instagram handle, uh, Double Jizzle. Of course. <laughs> We're talking about it. That's right. So, Walt Whitman, legendary high school. I know a lot of legendary people went there. A lot of legendary ball players. Yes. And that worked out fine. And then you get, how'd you get introduced to Lincoln? Yeah, it was crazy back then, yeah. No, no. Back then, dis all disrespect intended because I wasn't going to the high either. Or Wingate. Yo, now, you know, how I got to Lincoln is I was playing football, and me and my guy KK, remember KK? He played on a football team. Well, KK got into a fight with the guy from Coney Island, which was from my brother's and my father's neighborhood, but I was still in junior high school then because I got left back and he moved on. Well, anyway... He got jumped and had to transfer, but he told me, if you want to get it to Lincoln, you have to pick that you're going to take up animal science. <laughs> that, that was the way to get in if you was from across town. Yeah. My God, what up, what up, Jaquan? Who dreams, what up? Yo, that's how I got in Lincoln. Yes. And for like that first half, yeah, I was dissecting pigs. And then you could drop it after that once you was in. <laughs> I didn't know that's hilarious. That's how I got it to Lincoln. Yeah. That's hilarious. I just went there on a Wow. What was your first couple of years like? At Lincoln? Yeah. By the time I got to Lincoln, 
I was like six two. I was a six foot two freshman, and uh, I wanted to try out for the team. But then there was this kid in my gym class who I'm not gonna say his name. He was on the team, and we used to play one on one in gym every day. He used to kill me, right? Every day, kill me. I ain't talking shit. Wait, she tried garbage every day, right? <laughs> so when the tryouts was coming up, I was like, yo, I, I think I want to, you know, give it a shot. I should try for Lincoln. There was no JV. You either made the team or you didn't. He was like, you can't make the team. He was like, look at me. I'm way better than you and I don't get no work. <laughs> Wow. This dude who used to kill me in gym class told me I was trash. Don't even waste my time. Which was a bad decision because who knows what would have happened. I mean, I'm a six foot two freshman. I could have been a project. You know what I mean? I didn't, you know, even if I didn't make the team, I could have worked out with the team. You know, Coach Hartson could have had me there doing drills. You know, whatever. Hold on, we know. Do 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 we both know him, or he's somebody that's older than me and moved on? Okay, okay, I, I didn't know him. Okay, got you. All right, all right. You know, Scar, Scar's on the check, and he said, what up? Scar from Lincoln. Scar, what up, Lincoln football? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yo, remember how diesel he was? He was like Hershey Walker when we was in high school. That's right. That's right. Yeah, my guy, Who Dreams, Who Dreams said, coaches will definitely take a chance on a 6'2 freshman. <laughs> you 6'2 and you didn't listen. You know what I'm saying? You listen to the other guy. Right. Imagine that. I was, I was, I didn't know about this. I was 14. I didn't know. What do I know? I didn't know. 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 Fox said, Heather be in them. Whatever that means. Oh, that's right. First, first, before he went to. Got you, got you. Wow, wow. He said, Heather B and them cats will be on the uh, stories. Oh, this is crazy. This is crazy. So, you listen to this guy who gave you some bad advice. Boy. 
Boys Club at the same time they played in Whitman, that made me feel like, well, tag, if I want to get better to his level, I got to play all the time. By the way, they said John used to come in here and get fit in the Boys Club. John ain't tell you all that. No! No! He was talking about the dudes he played with. He never really talked about his numbers that much. <laughs> yes, yes. Hold on, hold on, let me see. My guy, Ballhead said, what up, Ballhead? He said, ask him if he still got the Big Dreams record. Me and you gave him. <laughs> <West Wall. laughs> yes. uh, that's that's my guy. See, see? Ballhead, appreciate it for that question, brother. Respect, dude. Yeah. So listen, now, during this time in Lincoln, right, I know for all of us can testify this. And I'm going to talk to one at a time. We're going to go. I'm going to say this name. And I want you to tell me what this name means to you. Tony Gratani. Yeah. He was the first person to introduce me to the Gatorade gum. Remember the Gatorade gum? You took that gum and they actually quenched your thirst. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, he gave us that too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had them in high school. It was the little uh, triangle uh, Gatorade gums used to give us to quench our thirst. For you guys out there listening, Tony Gatani, he wasn't a coach. He was like a, a volunteer who worked with all of the teams, damn it, because he worked the football team, swimming team, don't make a difference. But he was very close to us in the basketball team. And, you know, you need a, a kind word. He was definitely uh did to give you some good words of encouragement but don't don't get him mad boy he started to saliva for the side he started to get him upset you know and he only got mad when the refs or someone tried to cheat us or do us wrong right right yeah yeah Scott said, Tony was special. I received the trophy my senior year. Wow. Great man. Yes. Great man. Yes. Yes. Now, the next person I'm going to bring up. I was talking about him today. I was talking about him today with Coach Bud. Lawrence Bud Pollard from Jefferson. Head coach of Jefferson High School. Yeah, man. And he was just saying how good of a coach Bobby was and how he allowed, you know, Tiny to step into that position to take Lincoln, Lincoln to the next level. You know, what 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 did uh, Coach Hostine mean to you? I know what he meant to me and everybody else, but what did he mean to you? I was 17. 
16, 18 years old. I had never had a man in my life ever show me that he cared about me at all. I had a, you know, a real, I came from a childhood of child abuse, crime, anything you could think of. I, I was poverty, I was, I was a part of that single parent. You know, I had no father figure. I had no man ever tell me anything positive about me or life ever until I met Coach Hartz. He is everything. If it wasn't for him, I don't even know if I would be here right now. Same here. Changed my life. Changed me. He, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that Coach Hartz changed my life. And to this day, I don't even know why because I was nobody. I don't even know why he chose to go out of his way to help me. I, I wasn't the star of the team. I wasn't, you know, I was just one of his kids. And he went so far above and beyond to help me. To, I, I didn't have words to express to y'all what he means to me. Everything. Everything. You know, I share with my audience, my basketball heads, man. They They know. Because I always talk about coach and say, I don't know how I made the team. I still tell him this to this day. And he goes, you made the team for a reason. We saw something in you. Um, but not knowing, him and Steinberg had a falling out when he picked me. Really? Yes, I found this out at coaches. uh Award is uh, acceptance award. He was getting an award for the, being a Brooklyn legend. And we was all having a conversation. And Steinberg says, you know, Glenn, me and Bobby started talking after he picked you because I thought he made the wrong decision. Wow, this, this is our assistant coach. Yes, yes. Coach Steinberg. Facts. Yep. And... Coach said, you know how Coach said, Coach turned around and go, yeah, Glenn, but we made him eat his words two years later, huh? He was like, Steinberg was like, who knew you was going to grow to 6'4"? Who knew? Appreciate that. Yeah, I, listen. There, there was no, there was no tournament church with me. I, I tried out with a pair of canvas Converse's, cut off blue jeans, and a white T-shirt. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. Facts. No, yo, listen, I, I remember I got, I started thinking, right? It was like after my freshman year in Lincoln, and I stopped going school shopping after that because I remember school shopping was such a big thing, you know, to have a, a wardrobe for the first two weeks of school, to go back to wearing the same thing you was wearing last year. But when I got on the team, it gave me such an array of confidence. I didn't care about having the new things because I have ball gear. Right. That was my fashion. That was the things that was hot for me. So it was like, nah, I'm not worried about new clothes. I'm just going to play more tournaments and get more shirts. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and that was the come up. Wow. 
So me and you had sim similar paths. <laughs> Facts. There you go. I'm telling on you, Spike. <laughs> Early in school, my, my sophomore year, I got gym class. He was in my gym class. And he's like, you know what's up? We start talking like, yeah, you know, I'm going out for the team, you know, blah, blah, blah. He said, yeah, I'm going to be on the team, too. You know, he's real, like, cocky. Like, Very cocky, yes, yes. <laughs> Right, right, right. So me and Spice start playing, and immediately I noticed his handle was ridiculous. It was like a Harlem Road. <laughs> Nah. Like yep. You know, but Spice, he was kind of strong. He was about five ten maybe, and I'm six five. But he would tear my ribs up, get that step, and boom, jump into me and lay it up. I kept going, yo, what you doing? And he's like, shut up, I can play no. I was going, that's an offensive foul. He's like, no, it's not. Check the ball. No, it's not. That's how I met Spice in gym class. Him jumping into me, tearing up my ribs. Was he was he shooting it off the backboard? Right. Some dude named 
you you named about six dudes who were pretty nice on one team. Right, right, right. You know what? I was already like he was. I think he was starting from day one. Like coach put him in the starting lineup. Like he was, you know. I was like the eighth man. Mm. Right. This is why you don't listen to those dudes. <laughs> find out for yourself, man. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Got you, yeah. Yes, that was big. That was big. You got your shot stuck on the backboard. Yeah, he was the joke. He was he was easy to play for. You had to get used to it. Yes. <laughs> yes. What are you doing? Space, you're out of control. You're out of control. <laughs> yeah. Facts. Yo, hold on, hold on for a sec. You know what's so crazy? Can't see your face. Your number was 41, correct? Huh? Your number was 41. Yeah, 41 and 14. Yeah. Yo. That's that Shenanda Hoa. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. And we have beat Troy that year. Yeah. That's dope, yeah. That's crazy. So I'm, I'm waiting for my artist to hit me up. So as we go along, he should be coming in and, and showing you. Uh, he, 
Yeah, yeah, he already did it, so I'm waiting for him to hit me up. So, but we're not finished yet. So, let's we go. We stand on spice and silk, right? Let's go. Now, I interviewed Coach Haskins last year, and he said, out of all the guards that he played with and seen, that spice and silk had to be two of the best guards he's seen in New York City history. He said they may not have, you know, the the accolades of some of the other great guards, but how they worked together was far better than anything he ever saw. You got to understand, Spice, his junior year, he had the team to run for himself because Silk got shot. Spice was all city his junior year. Senior year, Spice was ineligible, didn't play. Silk had the team to run for himself, and he was all state. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta imagine two of them individually was all city but separately when they had to get together. Yeah. First of all, Spice was unpressable. We used to have drills in practice and Coach Hartstein used to make Spice sit out the drills because Spice would just get the ball and dribble through the whole press. In the game, and coach used to say, that's not realistic because if Spice is not in the game, we're not going to know what to do. Facts. Facts. We used to make Spice sit on the side while when the rest of us ran the press offense. But then, you know, when the game comes, he should be like, Spice, go. Teams be pressing. Spice would just dribble through the whole team. They just play, yo, it was, yo, his handle was so ridiculous. He had the I seen him shake Pearl. Washington and Pearl is the king of shit. I got a billion Pearl stories too, but my sophomore year, I didn't mention this that when her report cards came out and my I had a bad report card and my mother made me quit the team, which devastated me. You wasn't ineligible, but you was ineligible by your mom's standard. Right. Got you. <laughs> Yeah. On your way, yeah. You know, that is so I, that that just devastated me. But I still used to come to the games, and when Lincoln played boys and girls, by this point Pearl was a junior. He was already the hottest player in the city. And when we played them, it was standing room only. There was so many people at the game; they had to get the police. We're at Lincoln or at boys. Was people was they, they had people on the track? On the track, outside, everywhere, court side, surrounding the court. It was ridiculous. The police don't come to a high school game. The police was at the gate inside the gym. I, this, is this is crazy. This is crazy. This cross, his yeah. Right, right. Wow. 
That's what he said. He mentioned that. He mentioned that. He got He caught him. Right. So, yo, question. No, not more of a statement. Uh, I remember watching a news sports show, Channel 7. It's a high school game, Abraham Lincoln versus Boys and Girls. And I remember telling you this story, and I was like, Pearl shook this dude, and he falls, and the camera went in his face. And you was like, that was me. <laughs> what year was that? Right. Pass forward to the game. Somehow Pearl gets a steal, and it's just me and him. And he's coming right at me baseline. He's coming right at me. And I remember going, he likes to go baseline. So I put my foot on the baseline. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. He invented a lot of things. Yes, the boogie, the boogie head. Nobody would had the boogie head before Pearl. Kenny, you know he did the same thing as Soul in the Hole in the championship to win the game. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, I, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing. The, uh, my guy Fish MC said Pearl was the only one that got my cousin, Gene Smith from Georgetown. Yes, yes, yes. Let me, yo, let me tell you, I've always said this. I've said it. I never said it out loud. But I think Tony was connected. I'm going to say I believe that as well. I don't know. I can't, I can't vouch. And I'm not saying he did anything negative. I'm just saying the man was connected. <laughs> well, he was, he probably was already retired because he was pretty old when we he was around us. You know? If there's no pearl, there's no carrier dome. What would what would make a college create a basketball arena, thirty thousand people, and they're not really that good? But then pearl comes and fill up the whole stadium every night. That's the beginning of the Big East. That's the Patrick Ewing and all those guys came out. That's the birth of Syracuse and the birth of Big East. Pearl Washington. Yes, facts, facts. And you know what's so crazy? Jerry Ice Reynolds said when they met Chris Mullins and them in a state championship, he couldn't believe how good Chris was. So mind you, they had Jerry Ice Reynolds, Andre Irvin, Beetle Washington, Cosell Brown, Ed Davender, Andre Kibler, Joe Green, Greg Jones, Greg Jones. And you know who the ball boy back then? For Alexander Hamilton, Lloyd Daniels. Yes, yes, yes. Did 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 I mention that? Did I mention that when I interviewed him? Oh, for sure. Even though I didn't get any burn then, but I got my own Lloyd Daniel, Lloyd Daniel story, and they heard it a thousand times. We're gonna talk about our chip. I was a, a Brooklyn playoff run, and we had to play Jefferson at Jefferson, and it seemed like we was playing in Rikers Island. Yes. You should see the gym now. They have a brand new salt water pool. Salute to my guy Bud for. Just redirecting, I mean, redecorating uh, Jefferson's whole facility. When we was there, it looked like a jail. So I'm going to let you. Jefferson was rated the worst high school in New York City. I remember they had a whole thing in the paper ranking the worst high school with the worst graduation rate and most crime. And it was like Jefferson was the number one worst high school in New York City at, in the 80s. 
Wow. I would tell I tell Bud when I walked through the school, I was like, yo, this it, it looks totally different from when we was here in the 80s. I thought I never been to Rikers Island, but I thought that's what it looked like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had the playoffs. We played Jefferson twice. We barely beat them. But we beat them twice in the regular season. We got to play them in the playoffs. Coach Rockstein calls me into the office. <clears throat> he goes, so Jefferson got a new kid on the team. He was hurt. Lloyd Daniels. <laughs> And he had peasy, he had peasy here. Oh, time out, time out, time out, Kenny. I think you got it wrong. Lloyd was a freshman, not a sophomore. He was a freshman. Cause we was in the same, we was in the same grade. Yeah. But he probably got left back like me anyway, so who knows? <laughs> yes. Yeah. No. He gave me 29 of the most disgusting points I ever got in my entire life. Holding this dude. Coach didn't switch off to the end of the world. Damari. Damari. It was Damari. Yes.
Yes. Yeah. 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 We was we we couldn't wait because we knew we was gonna play. We was like, yeah. <laughs> Everybody knew that. Everybody like, yo, G. So they get the game. He let it go. Y'all was calling me, y'all was calling me ice back there. Y'all like, ice, shoot it, shoot it. Yeah. Shoot it, ice, shoot it, ice. Yeah. Like, Yo, nah, that, that was, that was a memorable. And, and I was saying during that time, I didn't mind riding a pine. You was a freshman, you put in your dues, you wait your turn, right? And you do it the proper way. A lot of guys like to jump ahead and, and you kind of miss out on things. Um, a little side note, uh, talk to this young man right now, probably going to have him on my show Wednesday so we can talk. He's He started out at Wagner High School in, Saint, in uh, Staten Island as a freshman. Then COVID hit. And he wasn't playing. So he transferred to this Catholic school, get his education paid for, different side of the tracks, better education system. You know, just, you know how it is on the, on the other side. And team did was doing well. Gel with the team. Team is very, actually very good. And the coach scheduled them against a lot of double A competition, even though they're in the A. And they just beat a double-A team, which is Brooklyn Collegiate, which is one of the top teams in the city. But he wants to go back to his neighborhood school, which is Wagner, which yesterday or the day before yesterday, a teenager got stabbed in the school. So I called him the other day and I said, yo, X, you, you really think you're making the right choice by you going backwards and you're probably going to have to sit out. Right, instead of staying and toughing it out, he was saying he was having problems in the classroom and the social aspect of the school. I was like, Well, you plan to play division one basketball? You know how tough it's gonna be to keep your grades up, travel, play ball. It's gonna be challenges. It's good that you go through it now, then have to start over. Because you're going backwards and coach is going to look into that. And I just want to say that because he's dealing with that right now. You know, here you're in a good situation. You need to go back to a situation where you left. And when you go back, somebody getting stabbed in the hallway. Yep. He doesn't see three or four moves down. You know, I saw a stat that said only 1% of high school basketball players get Division I scholarship. 1%. That means 99% of all kids playing high school ball in America will not get a D1 scholarship. It's that hard to get a Division I scholarship to any school. It's that hard. So if you got a shot, you have to put everything into this because it's that hard, but the reward is that special. Like, as a youth, you, it's, it's hard to see it when your friends are telling you, yo, why you go to that school? You know, it's corny over there. You know, whatever they tell you. 
know, they telling them or whatever, young kid, other young kids that don't know what they're talking about, telling him something. He's probably just hearing a lot of chatter. It's chatter. But, you know, you, thankfully he has a person like you to tell him, no, there's, there's steps that you have to wait your turn, and there's a process that you have to trust. Like you said, when he was a freshman, you waited your turn. You knew there was guys, seniors, they had all city players. We have four D1 players. Okay, I'm going to count Spice even though he was ineligible, but he was going to be on team. We have four D1 players in our starting five. Yes, yes. And the big dude was Sean Williams, who was all city a couple years later. Yes. Hold on, because I have this picture. I think it's in my phone. I sent it to you. Uh, yes. The championship, that the team picture, right? If you look at all the guys that was on the team that went Division One, Spice, Silk, you, Damari, myself, Dave had a banjo. Let me tell you something. Bernard Mitchell, to me, how you talk about Pearl, I just think Bernard, how can I say this? You know Bernard never played college basketball? Really? And he was all city-wide. No one recruited Yo, I had no. First of all, this would, would trip me out because coming up, how it came up behind Sean and Bernard, you know, when the letters started coming in, Coach, was, we we got a little bold, Kenny. You know, Coach didn't give y'all y'all letters. Since Coach didn't work in the school, we would go steal them, right? We would go to this mailbox and steal the letters. So I, I was just like, so many letters was coming in for me at the time, and I didn't understand it. I'm going, Bernard and Charlotte are so much better, and Bernard is a beast. Not even junior college. And the person who got him into college was his girlfriend. That's hard. Me and Coach talked about this. I, I don't know what was going on with them at the time. Bernard said he was going through some things. But you ask Kenny Anderson, you ask Gerald Green, he lit their asses up. And no one knew who he was. They were just like, who is this kid? Is it because he didn't go to none of the camps and stuff? I have no. And then there was another thing. He he didn't play how we play. Like me and Sean, would go, we was like on Empire State team. We'd go to hoops and all those things. He played Madison Square Broncos with us, played AAU, but he didn't play outside of that. Yeah, I mean, but when you're all city, you got to get a look. And New York, New York, all city is like, no disrespect to a lot of states, but New York, all city, especially in the 80s, were really good basketball players here, man. I say this all the time, Orlando Blackman, second team, all city played at Kansas State. And that's second team. Maybe it was his kind of tallest Bernard. Like 6'2. Oh, he was because he was DCI. No, Bernard, Bernard, Bernard was like Bernard, no, no. Bernard like 5'11, 6 feet. But he could jump, he could shoot, and he could score with the best of them. Like Bernard in the right situation, he could have played Big East. He could play anywhere, actually. Surprised. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't really know the answer, but that's surprising, not even in junior college. That's surprising. Yo, I, I want to jump back to, to a story you shared with me. Uh, after Silk got shot, you was like, yo, G. When Silk come back, you know the cheerleaders, they're going to be, they got this cheer, they be saying, Silk is back and it's going to be trouble. Yo, that's what's sticking in my head. And then when he came out, senior year, 
and they had that chant, and it was just like this dude was like a super superstar. Like he 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 had the the Nike Air Forces from Athby. Remember Athby? Yeah. And Richie Kosick, who I'm still in contact with today. Yes, he talked about that. Yes, he talked about that. It's going to be a wrap when he get back to school. Right, right. That's right. Not for nothing, you was our best low post player. Damari was our best low post defender. Biggs became a scroll once he got to Fairly Dickinson. No, you you were you were our best big man. Trust me, by far. Biggs didn't have the offensive skills that you had then. No, no. He was a great defender, though. He blocked uh, your shot. But Big didn't develop till he got to Fairleigh Dickinson. He was able to get a lot freer. That's what I was saying to my friends. Why are we going out for the team? They're number one in the state. Who's picking three freshmen? Wow. So who was your toughest opponent when you was in high school? No, play it. Okay, we're going to take Lloyd Daniels out of the equation because I only caught it at one time. Right. I'm going to answer to every question. Mm. Because I played against him twice my junior year. And like I said, that was his senior year. He didn't even belong in high school. I think he 
<laughs> right, right. The lefty, yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, I'm. It wasn't that a scrimmage, though. Nah, that was a real game. That was early in the season. That yes. Was a real game. And um, Kevin Love, Kevin Love was like, "Yo, Andre Kevin Love is like the best quarterback in the league." Yeah, he was really tough in that game. I remember that. I'm gonna shout out Andre Kibler just off the top of my head. Did you? Was it? Was it you that told me about what Andre? How Andre Kibler dunked on Devil Dog in the uh, Kangaroo Classic? Right. Facts, facts. And you know, their their nephew, Gary Irvin, became a top player in the city and now he's the coach at Nazareth. Yeah, the Irvins. So, yes, very, very cool. He's the one that kind of raised uh, Gary. So now I'm looking at, go ahead. That's so real. And then it's so crazy. When y'all left, we got smacked by boys and girls again by 20, my sophomore year. And then the junior year, we had enough. That was it. That was it. I'm going to say a few names real quick before we move on. Um, Eric E.J. Martin. Dwayne Shake Martin, FDR. It should have been it should have been Johnson, Eric E. J. Johnson, but they put Eric E. J. Martin. Yes. 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 Exactly like him. No, nah, no, nah. the Dwayne, Dwayne was is definitely a class act. Then you got Spice Kilpatrick and Mike Waltman from Lincoln. Shout 
Yeah, he made he made all Brooklyn. I, I I was just surprised to see his name. He was the last person on the list, so I wanted to talk about that. Now, Kenny, I ask everyone this, so don't take it personal. Who asked did you bust to let you know you could play Division One basketball? Division One. When was that game that you said, you know what? I go D1. You mean in high school? Yeah, in high school. You know, in my school, it's a little funny because, you know, I wasn't, first of all, I, didn't, I wasn't really that confident. I, didn't com I wasn't confident until like the end of my junior year, going into my senior year. I wasn't really like a, I was the type of player that, It was, it was the FB camp. It was called FB back then. Yeah. With all the top high school Yes, FB. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The hoop scoop, hoop scoop report, hoop scoop report. Yeah, you, you 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 also told me, right, when you was young, 
when I was young, girl, <laughs> that if your name, if you get your name in here, and yo, I swear to you, you see the little marker? Yes. My name was in the honorable mention section. Yo, and I had no way of getting, I wanted to show you so much, like, yo, I made this Dream Smith. It was already my junior year, right? And it was just like everything. Coach sent me to BC, five star. You know, by the time you guys left, we was coaches in, right? And respected. So he was able to send us a lot of places. Um, And then it, it was good for me after I graduated and left prep school with the Phil Dickinson, was able to play against you. I, I, I was playing the week, freshman of the week, and, you know, I told you the story about uh, my coach who ruined my confidence after that and then transferred to another school, right? But then the damage was done because not only he would badmouth me, he would badmouth me to my coach. Only because I took his, you know, his, his player's spot, who was a senior. Yes. For those out there who have a, a choice of schools to go to, you know, some people, you know, first of all, getting any scholarship is incredible. Like I said, before, yeah, there, yeah. Big picture. From where we come from, if you can go to college on a, on free, it's incredible. Start there. Now, for the rarefied air people who have choices. School to go to, it's very important that you pick the school that's right style of play for you. And what I learned, you know, what you should do when you go on your visit, and they, you know, they say they introduce you to the player, find a dude that gets the least amount of run and talk to him. Talk to them, don't talk to the stars, don't talk to the dude that they assigned to you to walk you around. Because, you know, their job is to hype up the school. Yeah. It happened to me. I did it to some other recruits coming up. You know, that's their job. You know, you show them around, show them a good time. Get a couple of dollars. Right. You know, and it's funny. The guy who showed me around St. Peter's was Kevin Boyle, who's now one of the biggest high school coaches in America. That's right. Wow. Yeah. 
ask him how the experience, how's the coach? Now look at his face. If he goes, no, oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so real. That's so real. No, it, I, I, I went through the same thing with Tom Green. It was a moment during that year. We were called the Baby Boomers. We were in 15 games when we either lost or won by three points. And we was like in the middle of that or towards the end, and he was upset. Mind you, breath smelling like liquor. I noticed that real quick, and he started chewing everybody out. So, and he was getting personal and disrespectful. And I knew sooner or later it was coming to me. And I was just like, yo, if you think this is going to help us as a team, you wrong. Because you ain't doing nothing but hurting God's feelings. Right. right. Something I already know about. So, after experience that, that nonsense with uh, Tiny, Tiny Green, uh, L Lalonia, whatever his name is, uh, I, I just said, you know, I, I'm I'm tired of this, man. I'm going to say something. And he told me to get out of practice. And I told everybody, I said, uh, if he kicked me out, we all leaving. Because if I leave, he going to continue to abuse y'all. And everybody took off their jerseys. We left. That next day, I became captain. Right? Yes. But he also told me about the business of basketball which I never know, and I'll share this with you. Do you know about Pay for Wins? I learned about it watching your show, watching your interviews. I didn't know about this until you said it. And I had a funny story about you talking about how much dudes got for but go ahead. No, because that was going to be my next question, right? We talk about what do we get on a road, how much money we get in a road, and he was just so happy we was playing Wake Forest. And it was an $80,000 deal. And he was like, this is the, where upset comes from. Because not only the school lose the game, they lose their money. And I was like, and we in here starving. And y'all here getting money for wins and losses. I never knew that until you said it. How much would you guys put DM on the road? That that was James Majors got five dollars a game, and then Gerald said he got a little bit more once they went to the Final Four. I only remember in four years getting money once. My freshman year, Coach Bob Kett, rest his soul. The assistant, his assistant, a lady named Ann Kett, who begged him to give us. So, like, we're in a city, it's like breakfast. At, we're coming as a team, we're going to eat breakfast. We're coming as a team, we're going to eat lunch. As a team, we're going to go to a restaurant and eat dinner. We never had money in our head. So, when you said James Major, you said $5. I'm hating on James Major right now. Yo, I got five dollars There was in the Big East. Yo, I, I feel like they said we got treated lovely. Our pockets was nice. Spice told me the reason why he left school because the coach wasn't feeding him and he was hungry. He said he went to coach and coach said 
He couldn't do anything for him, so Spice left school. Were you there that day? <laughs> right. No, Division One, no. Nope. He did. Many, many a sad NCAA violation story starts with who's going to tell. So, in fairness, we was hungry, but I don't know. I mean, looking at the coach, he's looking at his whole institution. I don't know if he could have gave Spike the money. I, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a touchy situation, but, you know, I don't know if Spike left, left after that. That, that was. And and kind of change the trajectory of his basketball career. Absolutely. Yeah, he said he went to uh, Brooklyn College, and then he had to sit out some, so he missed some really big games, and then he left Brooklyn College. Yeah, yeah. What 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 transition did you have to make once you joined the team? St. Peter's. What adjustment? Yes, yes. Cause now we we the same size and I'm playing two guard. Yes, yes. In, in college, in, in in high school, you was good, but in college, yes. And Sean was, and Sean Wynn did, was the definition of a tweener in high school. I've ever seen in my 
Yo, he did the dunk like this against us. He did that in the game. But I I, I I had the best of him that day. I think I had 18 and I fouled him out in Jacksonville. But he was a hell of a player. I knew he was a pro. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's right. So when when did you when did the music kick in? After college. Okay. So how, what was the transition? Your brother pulled you in, or you were just like, "Can I get down?" How did that work? Tell us, your, yeah, I got you. I got you. My book is called My Brother's Name is Ken. It's the name of my book. And I just want to say it real quick. And I, I'm going through, I had a real, I gotta say, unique childhood. And it's like the prequel to Boogie Down Production. Got gotcha. you. Like Yes, yes. That's right. That's right. Be nice was going solo. And BDP needed a, a DJ. Right as I was learning how to DJ. Almost like the stars lined up. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I'm in college, and we watching videos, and rest in peace, Biz Mark's song, Just a Friend, comes on. And I'm going, yo, that's my dude, that's my dude, yo! And the rest of his history, man. It's crazy.
Yes. Great, great guy. So I'll tell you a quick story real quick. During this time, I'm the college DJ at Fairleigh Dickinson. I remember that. Right? So a lot of people used to come. You know, the rink was right down the block. The rink. So all of hip hop was at my school. When I'm talking about all of hip hop for Red Kingpin, Teddy Riley, all of those guys. Yes. The uh K9 Posse, Eddie Murphy and them brothers, right? Because he went to the school. Both of them went to the school. So that was my intro into the music. And then I come home and my guy A B Money, Easy Mo B is doing Miles Davis last album and then Flavor in Your Ear, then Biggie and all those. So that was my connection to the music. That's how I got in, because it was like, yo, G. What you want to do? So it's crazy how both our lives kind of a lot of these things happen. I can't see you a couple times when um, you was in college. Just my senior year, I remember coming up there. Y'all had the dope parties, man. Like, I was gonna say, Peter, we didn't have no good parties. FDU, they said FDU was on fire. Y'all had the crazy We had we had one of the top party schools in the country, and we had a we had a a, a, a club right now, Student Union Building. So it was just on and popping. I remember Silk came up when they was in the uh, playing against Duke. Him and Biz, him and Big, they got tore up at our club. Then he went next day had twenty seven against Duke. It's like, how do you do it? Yo, when Silk had that run, when Rhode Island had that run, yo, I was home going crazy. I was tearing up my whole dorm room watching my boy Silk. He was killing. Yes. Oh, murder, murder Sherman Douglas. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Facts. Facts. So, now... I'm going to bring you back when we come, when you do the book, man. Definitely got to come back because I, I want to hear the rest of those stories. Definitely going to get the book and promote it for you as well. Let's go. So, now we're going to do our top five, top five, top five, top five. All right? Your top five DJs, hip hop history. Facts. DJ, as we know it, was created by him. Yep. Who hurt invented hip hop. But DJ, as we know it, was created by Grandmaster Flash. Without him, none of this would be here. So he's one of my heroes, and I'm gonna start with Grandmaster Flash as the as the as the bedrock, the key foundation of it all. As far as cutting and scratching and, and all the turntable tricks, DJ Scratch is the best I've ever seen. Because he did, he, I've seen him do it in gigantic arenas. I've seen him do it in little clubs. I've seen him do it all over the TV, everywhere. As far as cutting and scratching, technical ability and showmanship, he's the best I've ever seen. I'm going to go with two. That's two. Yes, yes, definitely. As far as rocking the show, and that's not, and he's, he's like a family to me, but as far as rocking the show, he, he's the best I've ever seen. And I've seen everyone. When I'm speaking to you, keep in mind, I've seen everyone, and I, these are all my friends. I've seen them all. I've DJ with them. Right, right. Like my 
my peers. I'm not saying I'm better than them. I'm not. No, no, it's real, real. Yeah. But my peers, these are my guys. So those three, Flash, Scratch, Kid Capri, that's three. I'm going to say as far as DJing for a group, you got to go Jam Master J. Jam Master J, rest in peace. Yes. As great as Flash was, nobody saw Flash. I mean, unless you lived in the Bronx, you never saw Flash. Even when they did the message, Flash was in there, but there was no cutting. He was there, you know, posing. Jam Master J is the first dude we all saw. Jam Master J, Jam Master J, not DNC. So I'm going to put him at four. This is tough because I got like two, but I'm going to go. He could do the scratching, party mix. Yes, he could do it all. Got you. DJ DJ Premier said he got that from Molly Mall. He's in my top five producers of all time, Molly Mall. Actually, right there, my top three. But yes. Definitely, definitely. I was watching this interview today. All right. Now, who are your top five New York City basketball players of all time? See, that's tough because I can only go by who I saw. That's all I'm asking. Yes, yes, yes. He'll be on so. Yeah. And Steph used to come around when we was, you know, coming of age. So it was crazy watching all of them grow up. Facts, facts, facts. That's two. So, I'm going to talk about my era because these are the people I saw. In yeah. My era. Those two. John Johnson. Silk. This is tough. I didn't. I didn't. I never thought he was better than Silk. I never thought. He, I never thought he was better than James Majors. I watched him play, and after the wheelchair classic, his display, I was just like. Yeah, the Willow Brothers. Damn. 
They they won the state championship that year, didn't they? Yeah, they 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 beat they beat Billy Donovan and them, St. Agnes. All right, last thing before we get out of here, Kenny. I said I want to discuss this. You was live and direct right there watching your brother and my hip-hop idol, Big Daddy Kane, go at it in verses. How was it being there? Now, I watched it three times and then tape it, taped it, and I'm going to do a react video to it because I'm still hooked to this verses, and I can't even get off it. There's no, there's no guy, brother. It's all, I'm going to let you rock out. Yes, 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 yes. was very, very, very distasteful. They running out of songs. I remember that. So he tried his chest move was no, I'm not gonna let you make this about Kid Capri and Ann and who for freestyle. Songs. Put on more songs. They run out of songs. So that was the chest move between them that most people out was paying attention. 
I, I paid it, yeah. I paid attention to that, yeah. Right, right. So, but that wasn't it. Chris was like, no, I'm not going to let you King change the narrative. And King was like, no, I'm going to change this narrative because I don't want to be just song for song. Okay. So I peeped that. Then, some people were saying that Kane won because Chris was not finishing his songs and he was rhyming to the crowd. I mean, he was letting the crowd finish his song. Now, I was there. The crowd was singing every word to his songs. So, the style is, if you see the crowd singing every word, you rock with them. Sing, sing along. I, Chris is saying, I want to show the world how deep my catalog is. Look at everybody singing my shit. What you got for that, King? But I guess people watching it, I don't know if they couldn't hear the crowd or they couldn't understand it. So they're saying, well, some people, not everybody, but some people are saying, well, Chris was tired because he was letting the audience finish his rhymes. He was tired. And I'm like, no, nah, that was the style. And, you know, that's the style. Let people sing. But for some people said that, so I'm like, I don't know about that narrative. But well, you, if, if you know, if you know hip hop, that's Karis One stage show. Kane, Kane wants to say every word. That's the difference. That's the difference between him and Chris. Kane wants to say every last word. Right, right, right. Yep. A battle. And then when and then when the the locks and dipset thing happened. No, nah, it's the it's the competition. It's the competition thing. And I think when we go back to bring this back to basketball, that's the reason why James Naismith left, left Kansas University. He invented a game of basketball. Kansas University hired him. And then he quit because it turned into competition. Yeah. 
that's what you expect. And if I from Brooklyn and I like Jimmy, I don't give a fuck. It's Kate. And the Bronx is like, I don't give a fuck. It's Kevin. Like, so then I can't really see how that could be a winner or loser. But I think song for song, KRS has to win. And I think if you like technical, if you thought te- technical is what it was, then you're going to go for Kate. Cool. But now it's becoming a problem because if you know, I was talking to Buster at that event, and he was like, five people they tried to match him with, and all five declined. Because now no one wants to lose, and no one wants to go up against a person like Buster, who's like Chris. He's going to be like, ah, ah, you know, he's going to be animated. He has a lot of songs people know. So now we're going to miss out, the fans are going to miss out on some great verses, because now people are scared. Nobody wants to do Buster, and I think they're talking about Missy, maybe Missy might do it, or something. But now there's a lot of people that we're going to miss out because now it's this winner and loser thing. I mean, it's good for the culture. I mean, I understand. But if it's a battle, if it's a battle, cool. Right. But if it's a versus, it we it's, it because that versus machine could lose steam real quick if it turns into that. Nobody wants to lose. Nobody wants to lose on that big of a stage. So now it's going to be very difficult. Because Chris told me that it was supposed to be Kane and Rakim. I knew Rakim was never going to agree to that. Rakim declined. So then they said, KRS, what do you want to do? Of course, Chris, I get it. But you're right. You're not hitting that. Wreck it for wreck it. Wreck it for wreck it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, the more money gets involved, the more things change, and it takes away the authenticity of the crowd. It's ridiculous now. It's in the Barclays Center. It's in the Garden. And that's just to pay people. The real money is the sponsorship. Because millions of people are going to watch this. Shout out to Swiss Beats. Shout out to Timberland. Uh, you know, they are doing it. They created something. That, that don't last too long. That don't last too long. Incentive like that, right? Nah, that's real. Hold on, hold on for a sec, Kate. Okay? Yo, did you send a picture? Yo, I'm just uh, finishing it up, man. Oh, all right. So if you just not finish it up, let me. You can, you can, you can bring it in and show them if you want. That'd be dope. Cause we about to, we about to uh, sign off. I ain't that finished, so I'm like, yeah, I ain't that finished, so I can send it to you like in like 
All right, he gonna send it. He gonna send it after he finish. He say he's still working on it. All right, just send it, and I, I'll send it to him afterward. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, K. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he say he's still working on it. So, so for like fifteen minutes, he'll have it, and um, I'm gonna send that to you, man. Listen, now you have the opportunity to nominate someone else to be on the show. Even if it's somebody you don't know, if if that's what you feel, so listen, so listen. I know who you have. I know my time has not come yet for that level, but I would love to get Fat Joe on the show because I know he coached Rucker, and I only want to talk basketball, right? To these dudes, said G. I need to find out what the hell happened at Ben Franklin. Yep, again, I heard this, and I was like, what? Kenny Hutchinson told me the whole story. So, yes, 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 brother. But you get a chance to nominate someone to be on the show. That's how we do it. And we got eight more shows. No, I, I, I ain't going nowhere. It's too early, for me at least. Mousy McFadden. Yes. Yes. Right. I, I have I have no idea. But you know who, who did a mouth big fan and took it to the next level? Uh Jamel Tinsley. Ah, right. Didn't play high school ball, played summer ball, wound up at Iowa State, they get drafted. Nope. He didn't play high school ball at all. Yes. I would love that would be dope. I think he's coaching. He's still out in Cleveland. I know that. So we're gonna we're gonna work our magical line to make it happen. I don't know him from Adam, but that day I was amazed at this dude. I would love to see Mouse McFadden. That's that's dope. We're gonna work on that. I'm gonna call Silk tomorrow. Matter of fact, I may call Super after we get out of here and see can we make that happen. Appreciate that, brother. Well, listen. Listen, you coming back for sure. It, it, it took us a year. It took us a year to get here. We ain't going to wait for another year. We wait for that book to come out. We're going to do this again. Definitely. 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 I can imagine, brother. I can imagine. And you still, and the good thing is, you still look good. Like it ain't the world ain't beat you up. It's like you're getting younger. 
Appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man. I love you, man. Always. Salute. Yes. Thank you for joining us tonight. Wanted to say big salute to my guy, Kenny Parker. Meant a lot that he was on the show tonight. Get to chop it up. Talk about the history. Abraham Lincoln. You know how we do. Real splendors for life. Want to send a big shout out to all my basketball heads out there. Stuck around with us. Two and a half hours. It's crazy, right? It's what we do. It's that brotherhood. We getting out of here. I want to say peace to basketball world, the whole New York City. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding. You've been watching Basketball Heads Live. We are the official home for New York City basketball. Peace.